Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me, all you bargain hunters, as we once again pick up our sword and shield to take a deep dive into the chaotic dungeon that is the Nintendo eShop these days. And hopefully someone around here has brought some mana and health potions so that we can survive to click those like and subscribes. Right, swords and spells at the ready, let's explore. I have to admit I've been looking at the Torchlight games for quite a while now, and it wasn't until Stealth Dog, friend of the shows and also member of the Discord, link below, pointed out that Torchlight 2 would be the best choice to go for. It's a little bit better than the first one, and better than the third one, which kind of surprised me, but apparently it is. And its 8.2 meta score pretty well tells the story as well. What we have here is a top-down action-adventure role-playing game, and yes, it is multiplayer. Unfortunately, only one player offline, but local wireless 1 to 4 and online 1 to 4. As you would expect, there's plenty of weapons and loot to be had, loads and loads of different quests to go on, and even side quests. You've got all your usual of customizable characters, but what I thought was interesting also here was you get a pet to take with you. I had a rainbow unicorn, which is pretty cool. And there's even one of them new game plus modes, so that if you do complete it, you can go back and, well, complete it again but this time a little bit harder. Me and Stealth have streamed the game a couple of times if you want to go and check those videos out just for an extra look and a bit more of a feel of the game. I was going to mention that Assassin's Creed is on sale in the US, but instead I'm going to mention the fact that Ubisoft seems to be having a humongous sale. And this is going to be going on until August the 21st. And this means that if you're into your Assassin's Creed's Trials Rising, Wheel of Fortune, Uno Ultimate, Prince of Persia, Just Dance 2019, Just Dance 2018, Immortals Phoenix Rising, both of your South Park games, Scott Pilgrim, Monopoly, you've even got your Starlink, your Valiant Hearts, your Rabbids Party of Legends, even more Trials Rising. And trust me, just go and check it out, because there's much, much, much more. Well, okay, just a little bit more, but they're the main ones, I would say. So, Dragon's Dogma Dark Horizon. So, this one's for all of you that's completed Skyrim, or maybe just doesn't have enough money to pay for Skyrim, or you're just looking for something in the same vein, but slightly different. This one is definitely for you. I own this and I have done for quite a while and it's quite an enjoyable game. Would I say it's as good as Skyrim? No. But would I say it's a pretty decent game anyway? Yes. And would I say that it's definitely worth buying for this cheap ass price? <laughs> definitely. It is a action role playing game as you can see with plenty to do, plenty to see, plenty of quests and an okay battle system. It's got a great fighting system and you even get these pawns type characters or just cannon fodder as we like to call them. <laughs> Suffice to say if you're into this sort of genre you will definitely get a kick out of this one. Weirdly enough the normal version of the Sinking City isn't on sale. It's only the deluxe edition so lucky yus. And this one's a bit of an action adventure role playing puzzle game. And yes, if you think this game is inspired by the universe of HP Lovecraft, then you're absolutely right. And pretty well the skizzy of this one is you're a private investigator and it's up to you to uncover the mystery that surrounds the half-sunken city of Oakmont. And just in case you're wondering about the deluxe part of that name, this comes with the DLC Necronomicon, three side quests with the infamous Necronomicon and new monsters. Also the Merciful Madness DLC, three, three brand new side quests exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. They are spoiling us. To be quite frank and honest here, the Observer kind of passed me by until I realised that Rutger Hauer, or the late Rutger Hauer, was actually in it. This definitely piqued my interest as he's one of my favourite actors. Basically, the Observer is a cyberpunk detective thriller set in the year 2084 in Krakow, Poland. 
The world as we know it lies in ruins and corporations are seizing power after the fall of the governments. This kind of like starting to sound a little bit familiar. It does actually sound interesting. You can hack into the minds of those that you're interrogating, which does actually sound pretty cool. But there does actually seem to be a little bit more intrigue here after the mysterious disappearance of your son. Basically, you are an observer. And just as an added bonus, did you know that that Tears in the Rain monologue was actually written by Rutger Hauer himself? Apparently it pissed off the writer until they actually heard it back, and yeah, the rest is history. Such a talented man. I actually own XCOM 2 on the PC, and I rather do like it. It is quite a good game, it's a tactical, turn-based, grid-based game. And if you like this sort of genre and you haven't tried it yet, I would probably urge you to go and get this one, really. It's the age-old story, aliens rule Earth, promising a brilliant future for mankind, or secretly hiding a sinister agenda. And as you guessed it, it's up to you to unite and spark a global resistance to eliminate the alien threat. XCOM 2 The Collection includes the actual game, handy, four DLC packs, Resistance Warrior pack, Anarchy's Children, Alien Hunter, Shen's Last Gift, and the War of the Chosen expansion, all in one package for you to um, play. All the DLC packs can be activated individually, or if you want to start from the beginning you work your way through, you can do just that. And on with another game I own, and that's Lonely Mountains Downhill. And trust me, the devs keep releasing DLC for this and content all the time. Which to me is kind of refreshing. This one's actually quite interesting. You start at the top of a hill on your mountain bike and you have to try and get to the bottom. It is really difficult, or at least I find it really difficult. You're meant to get down, I presume, as fast as you can. I well, just take your time, let's put it that way, and try to improve those times over time. Um, you can customise your character and your bike over time as you unlock the customizations. But I actually bought this game for a little bit of relaxation time, and it was nothing <laughs> like relaxation. It was more nail-biting, shouting at the TV when it all goes wrong. I consider myself quite a calm person, <laughs> But maybe it's just me. And if you're looking for a bullet hell nightmare that you can actually admittedly play single player or multiplayer with a friend offline, then welcome my friend to enter the gungeon. This one's a pretty cool and addicting action-adventure arcade game. And trust me, it has a really neat style to it as well. And it's even got that procedure-generated thing going for it as well. And as dungeon crawlers go, this is unique enough to set itself apart from the rest. And trust me, there is plenty to shoot at, plenty to loot, and you will be using that dodge button a hell of a lot. Well, I think we've made it out of there unscathed. Maybe our wallet's taken a bit of a beating, but we have made it out. And as you can see, there are plenty more on offer. It would be really nice of you if you've enjoyed this or got anything out of this video to hit them like and subscribe buttons. It really does help the channel a lot. And feel free to come and say hello in our community discord. And don't forget to check out Dolphina's midweek sales coming to you on Wednesday. And as usual, take care of yourselves out there wherever you are, because life is better when we game together.